Hi there, I'm Ludwig and this is Data Platform Microlearning. So in today's episode, I want to address the subject, the issue of temporary tables. Now, you know how it is. Every now and then you do need to have some side table to perform some additional operations, to store some information. You don't want to include that information in the derived table. That's a concept for a different uh, video on this YouTube channel. So again, as usual, don't forget to subscribe. But the problem with creating those side tables every now and then is that we always tend to forget to clean after ourselves, right? We forget to clean up. We, we, re we forget to remove and to delete and to drop those tables. So you could just use some kind of a little hack in here, like providing a, a little prefix to each one of those tables, like in here, right? I created a table, I want to create a table because I have not created it just yet. You can see that in my tables refresh boom. I don't have the table called temp test. Let's say that I will call temp. I will call every one of these side tables a temp uh, table, for example. Then I want to have an ID colon, which will be a tiny integer. So the uh, the numbers that will be allowed in here are from 0 to 255 and it will be an identity column meaning it will all uh, auto increment every single with every single row and then I have the text data which will be the unique identifier so I'll generate a new ID in each one of those tables uh, those rows so again I can just create that table boom you can see that command was created uh, was completely successful so I'll just refresh I can see that the tape temp table a uh, temp test table is there it's empty so I'll just insert some data to it now I want to insert those new uh, unique identifiers and I want to insert 10 of them so I'll just use the little uh, shortcut to create a loop go 10 and this is it uh, right now I will select on all, all of my data and as you can see it works perfectly fine but again the issue here is that I cannot create I cannot forget uh, about once I'll be done with that data about dropping that table otherwise it will stay there it will be included in every backup it will uh, I will pay for storage if I'm on some kind of an Azure or cloud solution or if I'm collocating my data somewhere on some other uh, machines that I'm paying for storage. So that's a lot of issues. Now what I can do is I can use the simplest uh, solution for that issue of not um, having to worry about those temporary tables uh, at all, which is uh, implementing the temporary tables. And the temporary table cannot be easier to implement. You just put a hash in front of that table. Now, if I'll create that table, the hash temp test with the very same uh, configuration, you will see that in the tail, in the tables uh, folder in here, I don't see that table. Heck, let me just drop that test uh, temp test table. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Boom, drop that table refresh refresh you can see that temp test does not exist but hash temp test you've seen that it was already created if i want to create it again boom there is already an object named temp test in the database how is that possible if i cannot see that well if i'll go to my if I'll go to my system databases and if I'll expand my tempdb, you will see that next to the tables, I see my temporary tables in here as well. And under the temporary tables, I will see my test one, two, three that I created earlier. Let me just drop that table as well. So you won't see that. Uh, test one, three. Please remember that you cannot create a uh, boom. Here we go refresh this one right now perfect uh, you cannot create the table with um, uh, numbers in the front so you cannot create one to three test table you only can create test one to three but i do see my temp test table in here right uh, now now you also can see that it's not called temp test table it's called temp test or hash temp test then a heck load of underscores and then the additional id now the reason why i see this identifier is because the local temp test table the local temporary table is only meant for you so no one else will see that table right so this is the first characteristic of the temporary table 
it's meant only for you. Let me prove it to you. If I'll go and log in as another user, in here I'll just select username, boom, and you'll see that I'm logged in as some other user, right? I can also see that in here, boom, that I'm logged in indeed as some other user. So right now what I wanted to do, boom, sorry, what I wanted to do is I want to select star from, boom, test table. Oh, sorry, how is it called? Temp test, temp test, ta-da. If I'll select this query, boom, invalid object name, it doesn't exist. Now back to my main window, boom, I can easily select information from that hash temp test table, execute, you see it's empty. Let me just insert that some data to it, uh, boom, of course to hash temp test. Let me just insert some data to it. Tadam, the loop created all of the rows. Tadam, I have some data. It works perfectly fine. But and none of the other users on this same server, boom, if they wanted to select some data from my test temp test table, if they'll execute that, tadam, again they will not see that information. So the first characteristics, uh, characteristic as we just proved is that temporary tables are meant only for you. The second characteristic is that they will be gone the moment you will disconnect from that table, all right? So if you'll drop your connection, let's see how it works. I'll just right click my SSMS, I'll disconnect my window from here. So you can see that it's disconnected. If I wanted to run this query again, boom, it will it would ask me to reconnect. If I'll select my temporary tables and try to refresh it, you can see that this table is already gone. I did not drop it at all. If I'll connect to my query again, I'll connect my query to system again, boom you'll see that this table is gone. So the two characteristics of the temporary tables is the local temporary tables is that they are meant only for you. So no one else will see that table. And second of all, it will leave as long as you are connected to that table, as you're performing all of the operations. The moment you will disconnect from that server, that table is gone, just like that, all right? Now, you may see, all right, this is the perfect solution if I do want to have some side table, but what if we are collaborating? What if we are working with multiple people at the same time? Well, there is, an, um, there is a solution for that because what you can do is you can create another table which is called a global temporary table. And again, it is super easy because all it takes is to put two hashes in front of it. So again, I did create my hash hashed temp test table. I can select data from that table. You can see that it works perfectly fine. I can insert data to this table as much as I can uh, and as I want. Here we go. Hash hash temp test. Tada, it works perfectly fine. In my temporary tables, if I'll refresh it, I will see that indeed I do have the temp temp test table. There is no underscores in there. There is no ID at the end because any other user, boom, again, I am the other user in here. Let me prove it to you by executing the username function. Ta-da. I can right now read the data from the temp test table as long as I'm connected to the same server because in my tempdb database, boom, I will see the global temporary table, all right? So again, this is the difference between the uh, local temporary table and global tem uh, temporary table. Local temporary table is meant just for you and it will be gone the moment you will disconnect from that query, from that uh, SSMS, from, if you close your connection. The global temporary table, on the other hand, will be available for every single person who's connected to that server, right? Regardless of which in which database they work at the moment. And then on top of that, what you can, uh, what uh, when it comes to liveliness, the livelihood of that table is that it will be live, it will exist till anyone is connected to that table, right? So if 
I'll create that table, some other user starts working on it. If I'll disconnect, the table still will be live. But the moment the last person who opened the connection to that table will disconnect, they will also automatically drop that table. All right. So this is the uh, clue of uh, today's episode. This is the Mary tomb. This is how I want you to use those side tables instead of creating the tables with some additional prefix that will not mean anything. So if you like that episode, don't forget to leave it a like and as usual, subscribe to Data Platform Mic Learning and I will see you in the next episode.